How do we protect ourselves from Adab al Qabr? The Prophet said, Whoever dies on a Friday is protected from the Adab of the Qabr. Dying on a Friday is a good sign, inshaAllah, to be saved from Adab al Qabr. Another way to protect ourselves from the Adab al Qabr, Asma binti Abi Bakr, narrated from the Prophet that when the person enters his Qabr, if he is a mu'min, his salah and his siyam surround him. And the angels of punishment come. And the salah push them away. And they come from another side. And the siyam push it away. And the hadith then goes on. And as for the kafir, nothing can push the angels away. Of the ways to protect from adab al-qabr, memorizing and reciting frequently Surah Al-Mulk. And it's only 30 verses, brothers and sisters. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Surah Tabarak is the preventer from adab al-qabr. If you haven't memorized Surah Mulk, start memorizing it today. Ibn Mas'ud said, a person will be brought to his qabr and two men will come to him, meaning the angels of punishment will come. And when they come to him, it will be said or a voice will be heard, you have no way to get to this man. He would recite Surat Al-Mulk. Then they will try to come from his chest and it will be said to him, go away. Come to his face, it will be said to him, go away. Come from his top, it will be said to him, go away. And Ibn Mas'ud said, it will prevent from Adab al-Qabr. So how does Surat Al-Tabarak prevent from Adab al-Qabr? The one who frequently recites it, the one who memorizes it, the one who loves it, the one who recites it in Salah. Not just reading it once or twice, but being frequent in its reading. What else protects us from Adab al-Qabr? Dua. It is narrated that Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas would teach his children this dua the way that the teachers would teach kids alphabet. What dua is this? That he said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us after every single salah we say this dua: Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-jubni, wa a'udhu bika an uradda ila arda lil-umur, wa a'udhu bika min fitna al-dunya, wa a'udhu bika min adab al-qabr. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from cowardice. I seek refuge in you from living to a senile old age. A'udhu bika min fitna al-dunya, all of the trials of the dunya. And number four, A'udhu Bika Min Adab Al Qabr. Abu Bakr narrates that the Prophet would say after every single salah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al kufri wal faqri wa adab al qabri. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from kufr and from extreme poverty and from adab al qabr. Zayd bin Arqam said that I am only teaching you like the Prophet taught us. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al ajzi wal kasli wal jubni wal bukhli wal harami wa adab al qabr. I seek refuge in you from being lazy and from being incapable and from being cowardly and from being stingy and from living to an old age and from Adab al Qabr. And Aisha said, Our Prophet وسلم, would always seek refuge in Allah with this dua again after every salah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitna al nar, wa min adab al nar, wa min fitna al qabr, wa min adab al qabr. Now you tell me, the one who seeks refuge from Adab al Qabr five times a day for 50 years years of his life. Will Allah not accept even one dua once and that's it? Think about that. So brothers and sisters, from now on, after every salah, add this dua. And you can use any of them. Now, how about dua for other people? Yes, dua for other people as well. When our Prophet attended the janazah, he announced to the people, ask forgiveness for your brother and ask Allah to make him firm for the fitna because now he is being asked by the angel. When the burial is taking place and the sand is being put on him, he didn't say go and rush back to your house. They said, now is the time to ask Allah's forgiveness and to ask Allah for thabat because he is being questioned now. So this means when we go attend a janazah, if we want people to make dua for us, we should make dua for others. And what is the Salat al-Janazah dua? Wathir ibn al-Asqa narrated that the Prophet taught us dua al-Mayyit. And he said, Allahumma inna fulan ibn fulan fi dhimmatik wa habli jiwarik. Oh Allah, this person is now with you and he has left this world and he's in your company. Faqihi min fitnatil qabri wa adhab al-nar. So therefore protect him from the adhab and the fitna of the qabr and the nar. When is this dua done? In the janazah and after when the person has gone. This is the least that we can do, especially to those that have a haq over us, our friends, our relatives, our deceased loved ones. The least we can do, we make dua for them by name. We say, oh Allah, protect them from the fitna and the adha of the qabr. Imam ibn Malik said, I heard the Prophet make the dua in Salat al 
janaza and he said Allahumma fir lahu warhamhu wa'afihi wa'afu anhu wa akrim nuzulahu wa wasi'u idkhalahu wa asilhu bin ma'i wa thalji wal barak wa naqqihi min al-khataya kama yunaqqa al-thawb al-abiyadu min al-danas wa abdilhu daran khayran min dari wa ahlan khayran min ahlihi wa zawjan khayran min zawjihi wa qihi fitnat al-qabri wa adhab al-nar in the salah of the janaza we're supposed to memorize in case you have not memorized this dua in Arabic you are allowed to say it in English or any language because it is a dua it's not the Quran so after the third takbir in case you have not memorized the dua in Arabic don't just stand there and do nothing say it in any language and say oh Allah forgive him make his grave a vast place oh Allah exchange his evil deeds with good deeds oh Allah increase his nur in the qabr oh Allah protect him from the fitna to qabr and protect him from the adab al-qabr is the adab al-qabr permanent or will it stop Ibn al-Qayyim, in his famous book, Kitab al-Ruh, he mentions this issue. And he says, some ahadith seem to indicate that adab al-qabr will last until judgment day. Then he says, and there are other ahadith that mention that they shall stop after a while. And he says, and this is the case for the sinners of the believers, that they will be punished in accordance with their crimes after which the punishment will stop. And he says, it is also possible that the adab al-qabr will stop because of somebody's dua in this world for the mayyit. And it will stop because somebody gifted sadaqah for the mayyit. And it will stop because somebody made istighfar for the mayyit. And it will stop because somebody did hajj and umrah for the mayyit. And it will stop because somebody read Quran for the mayyit. So he says, these good deeds will act like a shafa'ah and will intercede on behalf of the sinners. So therefore it appears that it depends on the person. For some people, adab al-qabr will be permanent until the trumpet is blown. And for some people, the adab will not be permanent and it will stop.